Hello and welcome to this eCampus News webcast. My name is Andrew Barber and I'm a senior contributing editor here at eCampus News. And I'm delighted to introduce today's webinar, which is sponsored by Stratasys. It's titled 3D Printing and Product Design in Higher Education. Now, before I hand things over to our moderator, I want to take a few moments to highlight a couple of items. First, today's event will be recorded, so you don't have to worry about taking notes or anything like that. In a couple of days, we'll send out an email to you uh, that contains a link to the recorded event, and you'll also be able to download a PDF of the presentation from that same email. And second, please ask questions. You know, don't feel as if you have to wait until the end. At any point during the presentation, if you have a question, just type it into the Q&A box on your console and hit that submit button. And I hope to have some time at the end when our speaker can answer your questions. We also have a chat function which can be launched via that blue group chat icon down at the bottom of your screen. Please use chat to talk among yourselves or to contact me or the eCampus News team if you have technical issues or, or any other concerns for that matter. But please don't use the chat function to ask our panelists questions. Uh, she simply won't have time to monitor the chats. So if you have a question uh, for the speaker, please use the Q&A panel instead. And with that out of the way, uh, let me introduce our moderator for today, Cheryl Hattelvig, Director of Global Integrated Campaigns at Stratasys. Welcome, Cheryl. The floor is yours. Welcome to our webinar discussing advancing product design curriculum with full color 3D printing. My name is Cheryl Hatlevig and I'm a leader at Stratasys in Marketing and I'm your host for today's webinar. We are delighted to be joined by our guest speaker, Darlene Ferris-Labar, environmental artist and professor of art and design at East Strasbourg University. We're excited about the topic that Darlene's going to cover um, today during our webinar. Um, first, we'll spend a few minutes just introducing you to Stratasys and the work that Stratasys is doing in education. Then Darlene has brought some special guests with her from programs at East Strasbourg University, so we'll hear from Darlene and two students, Sam and Rachel. And then we'll have maybe a few minutes at the end for questions. Just by way of introduction of who Stratasys is, Stratasys is a 3D printing solutions company and our focus is shaping what's next. We are working with designers and engineers and educators across industry to shape the world every day and our solutions are changing the way products are imagined, designed, manufactured, marketed, and sold across the globe. Specifically for education, we are working to help shape the next generation careers and in education we find educators using our products in curriculum for the classroom, concept modeling, and functional prototyping for higher education. That brings value to prepare students for the workforce, to help professors and educators accelerate learning and project and hands-on work inside the classroom, and to create a great deal of innovation as the students and professors work on projects during their coursework. There's a number of education institutions that are using Stratasys technology in their programs, but today we are delighted to have a team of folks from East Strasbourg University and a program that they have talking about designing and 3D printing for full color in using Stratasys J750 products. With us is Darlene ferris Barr, who is a professor at the university and two of her students, uh, Sam and Rachel. They are both students in the art and design program and they have concentrations in product and graphic design. Darlene, I'm gonna turn the session over to you and you can introduce your program and your students. So thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, we are very excited uh, to be here today and uh, I'm going to start taking you through a little bit of my own work, which will lead us up to also where we are here at East Stroudsburg University. Okay, uh, just to start out, I have a sculpture background. I also do graphic design as well. And it was kind of a nice opportunity when 3D printing started to become more into the mainstream and, and when we started to implement it into our, our program because I found a new way of creating my work. Um, 
combining technology and sculpture, 3D printing was really a perfect opportunity for me for my own self-expression. I am an environmental artist. I care deeply about those vulnerable little species that exist on our planet. And I feel that our you know, fast-growing planet, uh, which is certainly becoming um, overdeveloped and polluted, um, is causing some you know, problems with species becoming extinct every single day. So I started to design um, flowers and plants. And that experience led me into something where I found that there are these wonderful engineered forms you know, that nature has provided us. Right now, you're looking at a slide that uh, is all about form, which is you know, stunning to look at because you know, we start to really see all those great forms that nature has provided us. But what you don't see is the color. Um, during this process, it was something else. I had to learn how to model and create uh, the forms in virtual space. It was certainly a new adventure. But that adventure led me into being as an explorer with the, as I would travel through this virtual space and rediscovering something I've never seen before um, through on our planet. We uh, have a E1200 uh, Stratus uh, printer. And on the right, you'll see that that is a 3D printed um, there are replicas of uh, plant leaves and flowers there, again, uh, without color. So the world is full of wonderful designs, whether in form or color. Uh, what we have here are extinct species, or going, I'm sorry, they will be possibly extinct. Um, they are, you know, um, one of those that they're trying to keep from going extinct. And you'll see that you have all these uh, great colors and uh, spots, and they're all very significant as well um, here. I tried to just print uh, in one big straight color. Uh, these are roses, and um, it certainly is effective, but it's not as precise as what it would be in real life. I then played with uh, the Object 500. Uh, as I started to learn how to apply color in virtual space uh, from Rhino 3D modeling software to Photoshop, um, I was then able to create replicas it printed out in color. However, as we know with the Object 500, uh, you're limited with color. And I had to narrow down to three basic colors and understand how to you know, be able to blend those specific colors, um, which was a, quite a challenge. Uh, we have advanced our program here at ESU, and we're very fortunate to receive the Stratasys J750. Uh, here in the slide, I'm presenting a, a lady slippers flower. Um, it is another one that is uh, possibly a, you know, a species that they're, they're keeping a watch um, from going extinct. It's, um, and, and so you'll find that looking at this here, I'm using a full range of colors now. Uh, I have you know, cyan, magenta, yellow, and also white and black. And that all has been able to create all those wonderful colors that we are able to see here. This is one full complete print from the J750. What's nice is that now I don't have to stop and think about only using three colors. I can just create. There's no roadblock. Um, I could create in real time put colors together, and what I see on the computer screen in Photoshop is easily replicated in 3D print form, thanks to the J750. Here we have a wild petunia, and you'll notice that I was able to take images of the veins of these petals, and I was able to, um, you know, image them onto the 3D model in Photoshop 3D. Uh, I like showing this slide because, you know, here I can zoom in uh, virtually, you know, on the computer, and I can start painting and applying color, you know, within Photoshop. And uh, that's nice because, you know, 
with something so intricate, it would be even challenging to paint by hand with a paintbrush to get into those little areas. So this has been great for this, um, this piece as well. What you see here is a 18-inch uh, tall uh, Aphrodite orchid, and this whole piece was printed as one print from the J750. Um, every tiny little intricate piece and form there. And now we get into what I would like to kind of give you as far as a, a demonstration here on the process from scanning to modeling and then outputting it into the J750. Uh, what you have here on the left is a real pineapple. This uh, pineapple I have at the moment is sitting on a uh, platform that is for the next engine scanner. That would turn around uh, as the scanner implements the different uh, you know, images that it's set to, to take. On the right is the actual 3D print of this, uh, not this particular pineapple, but of another pineapple. Um, I actually had staged the one on the left to, for this presentation today. Uh, what you have on the left of this image is that that laser that is sent out to go on the surface of the pineapple is then sent back into the next engine, uh, which you'll see there on the right. Uh, it's collecting geometry. It's picking up every little detail that it can on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, what it's doing is you'll see that it's flashing light, and that is picking up the texture which is actually the image. Uh, so it's the geometry, which is the 3D form, which I used to just work with in the early stages of designing the flowers. And the right is now the image, um, which is we call texture. In the next engine, uh, you will have an opportunity to fuse those scans together. Um, and it is quite a process. And these files are going to be quite large, just to put out there as well. So you want to make sure that what you're processing these files on, um, you know, is hopefully able to take something that has a lot of mesh to it. Uh, but um, you can also simplify the mesh also in Next Engine too before you save it. Um, but you'll also notice that in these leads here are really tough to scan. Uh, you could probably get the outer area of the pineapple, the parameter of the pineapple, but those leaves have a lot of parts where the laser is not going to reach. They go deep, and that's where I had to go in and then model those leaves. So on the left, this is an uh, image taken from Photoshop. When I was able to model the leaves in Rhinoceros 3D, I then brought that model into Photoshop and I was able to then basically build it together with the scan of the pineapple. Then I took an image of the actual leaf of that pineapple that I scanned, and I was able to make it as uh, an image on top of the 3D model within Photoshop. And that would be the texture that I originally talked about. So we, I was able to add now texture onto that model there. Then through yeah, Photoshop, I literally saved the file as a VRML and took that VRML and uploaded it into the J750. And here you can see on the left that the um, pineapple is on the platform there of the J750. Um, I then processed it. And then on the right, that is the final print. Uh, for people who are not aware out there that the yellow material is the support material because, you know, you're, I was able to, um, you know, have all those little overhangs and uh, all that negative space there uh, to be printed, you're going to need support material um, to have a successful build. And then this is the final product. Um, what you'll see on the right is the bottom scan of the pineapple. With NextEngine, you are able to scan the parameter of the pineapple and then 
uh, you're able to turn the pineapple on the side and scan the bottom as well. And then you're, with some pens and markers, you're able to then match up the bottom scan to the scan of the parameter for that pineapple. And there we have it. So um, that is pretty much the, the building and uh, creation process of that 3D printed pineapple. At this point, um, I would like to quickly just talk a, a bit about our program, and then I will lead into our, our students that we have here. Um, we are a art and design program here at East Stroudsburg University. Um, we really like that our students come out of our program with a lot of interdisciplinary skills. Uh, they are creative thinkers. They um, really get a good sense of uh, certainly technology, um, entrepreneurship. They learn to collaborate um, and understand sustainability as well. We started in 2012. Uh, we have a very basic printer that we acquired into our program, and this is called the 3D Touch here. Um, and that took us on to a wonderfully new adventure for our creative students. We then were able to continue to expand our program, and we then acquired, uh, through philanthropic donations, the Stratasys E1200, which for those out there that have used this, you know it is a workhorse. Uh, it's able to produce multiple parts and movable parts all in one. It provided our students the great opportunity to create intricate features um, and these forms that they would never be able to create before. Now we are on a new adventure. <laughs> um, the, those imaginations were pretty much flying in all directions and all sorts of things are possible now. We are able to expand our imaginations, but also our program. We're able to open up and develop a new program that, uh, in product design, and we hired uh, my colleague here on the left, her name is Jocelyn Cole, and also on the right we have Sam, who you will be talking to in a moment. And um, the part in the center is created by Rachel, who you will be uh, hearing from as well. Design thinking, problem solving. These are things that our students are able to do and achieve, and we're able to do it right there here in our lab. Practical applications as well. Um, students now have open doors that can lead them into the medical field here in this example. They can work with not only you know, modeling or 3D scans, but possibly uh, other data such as MRI um, or CT anagram scans. Our students have been really excited about 3D printing here at ESU, and they're out a lot, displaying what we have and educating the community. It's been a really great opportunity for us to bridge our curriculum to the community. And then the J750, which as you can see on the left, we have lots of color possibilities there um, that students can uh, work with. We have students that you know, have that great 3D modeling skill, but now those students who have painting backgrounds that are now playing with digital painting and graphic design experience, they can also utilize this wonderful technology. From medical to product to graphic design, there's so many possibilities and it's really unlimited. I love these examples. Uh, I took these pictures uh, during uh, an event that Stratasys had a table of their, their designs they had on display. And when I look at this, all I can think of is that our art students can do this. And now I would like to introduce Sam Tachi. Um, he is a CFA art and design student, and he has concentrations in product and graphic design here at East Stroudsburg University. Sam, I'm passing the torch to you. Thank you, Professor Ferris Labar. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I am a product designer here at East Roswick University, and I am interested in prosthetic design. Um, hopefully one day I'll revolutionize the way prosthetics are made and viewed. So this model here, I just want to thank 
um, Enable for giving me an opportunity to download a free file. Uh, this hand model allows me to understand how prosthetics are made, put together, especially 3D printed ones like this one. Um, by having this kind of resource, I am able to start developing my own designs and possibly improve the way prosthetics are made. This is a product that I've been working on for the past several months. Um, it is for a lady in the community. She suffers from a birth defect that prevents her from moving her arm efficiently. She enjoys running, but her arm has kept her back from her full potential. I hope this product will allow her to run more freely and really make an impact on her life. Um, it's basically an arm support, so when she runs, her arm doesn't just hang there as it does now. Um, the new model that I have will have a moving part um, that will allow her to freely adjust her arm, let it down if she needed to. Uh, these two parts here, including the third and newest model, was made on the Stratasys 1200 ES, a very good printer. During graphic design two, we were asked to create a product and brand. I came up with a product that is protein for fish called FitFish. Uh, my inspiration behind this is the love for the gym and fish. We were asked to also create a 3D model for our brand. Um, the model was going to be printed with the Stratasys J750, a full PMYK printer. Uh, that was very exciting to me. It was my first experience with the printer, and I was very excited to see the results and capability of the printer. I designed a shark tooth that serves as a promotional item. It is a desk piece about two and a half inches tall. Um, has a centerpiece that rotates with my Fitfish logo on, on it. I used Rhino, Rhinoceros 5 to create the model and then Photoshop to add the, the color and images. Um, it was quite an experience. It was the first time doing something like that. Um, taking a wallpaper that you can get off the internet, um, download download an image, and then just wrap it around the model. Um, I realized that the more colorful and the higher the resolution the picture is, the better the print would be. Um, so I'm just going to pass the the mic. The mic to Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Swartz. How can we do the slide? Um, I can't move the slide. Sorry, we'll do it for you. Sorry about that. I can't get the slide. No, yet. Okay. I'm going to talk. Um, I am Rachel Swartz. I am a BSA Art and Design student at East Strasburg University, concentrating in product design and graphic design. The G3D Lab has given me many opportunities that I never expected when I first came to ESU, including a project this semester with Scooby, who is a duck that has to have one of his legs amputated. Our professors Darlene Barisabar asked Alicia or another student and myself to take on this project. And we are both extremely grateful for this project. My dream goal in life is to be able to 3D print prosthetics for animals and humans and to be able to take my art skills and combine them to help people in need like Scoby. So I'm very grateful again for Jocelyn and Darlene our professors that gave us our opportunity to make Scobie a leg. He lost his entire leg. So we are making for Scobie, what we are making for Scobie is a little cup that his little nub is going to go into and it's going to be two sides of that cup that's going to have a strap to go around his feathers for more support. 
And at the bottom of the cup, there's going to be a joint that is going to be able to connect the leg of the duck. And then another joint that is going to be able to connect to the foot. So he will have full range in being able to move his foot up and down. Um, this is a picture of Alicia and I with one of the test prints of the joint that we will attach the leg to Scobie's foot and that we were able to print on the maker bot that we have. Throughout this project, we are documenting everything we do, which is nice because I am taking all of the photographs so I'm able to use my photography skills that I have. Scobie will be a lucky duck being able to walk again by his new 3D printing prosthetic leg that we are creating for him. Last semester in Graphic Design 2, we were asked to design a product to brands, and I created my own snowboard company since one of my biggest passions in life is snowboarding. I hope to eventually 3D print an actual life-size snowboard one day. The company is called Riveter Snowboard that I branded for the class, and I used my graphic design skills to create the snowboard that I printed on the new printer that we have called the J750. Here is my snowboard that I put into Photoshop and designed the front of the board. Photoshop now has Photoshop 3D, which is a really neat feature that Photoshop has. And photo what Photoshop 3D does is you're able to use colors to design what you want to do, like drawing and painting, on the board. And once I created my design on the snowboard, I merged all of the layers down into one. And from there, I put the text on the back of the snowboard. Then I was able to print the snowboard using the Stratus J750 that we received. And I am really happy how the snowboard printed out because the printer did a really great job showing all of the colors on the snowboard, which is really fascinating because all of the other printers that we have doesn't print in CMYK like the Stratus J750. So having the Stratus J750 is an incredible opportunity for everyone. And I wouldn't be able to do this without um, the 3G lab and our professors. So I'm very grateful that we have this lab. Um, so what you have here is an example of other products that were created in that particular class. Uh, these are all classmates of Sam and Rachel, and you'll see that whatever they were able to create, again, with their brand, um, normally they would be printing out on paper, maybe brochures or in booklets and such. Um, here it can be easily printed out right here in our classroom on the J750. Um, I don't know if Rachel and Sam want to say anything in regards to their... Yeah, I just want to say um, a lot of our classmates have great skill in 3D modeling and painting or um, digital painting, um, and it's really great to see them be able to put them both together, um, and this wouldn't have been possible without the J750 and the three, 3D uh, lab here we have at East Stroudsburg University, so. Great. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. And then this is a picture of our lab that we have. So you can see all of the printers and the laser cutters that we have. So we are very, very lucky that East Jackson University has all of the 3D printers that we have. And with all of the 3D printers, we really can express our artwork and really create what we want with all of the technology that we have. So it's an incredible experience, and I'm very grateful to be part of ESU. And having such a broad um, range of printers, uh, from very basic ones to the J750, uh, gives us a lot of opportunity for like prototyping and uh, more finalized models. I feel like the MakerBot and the 1200ES um, can be used more as rapid prototyping uh, printers, and then the J750 can really be the main product maker. All right, and then um, as you can see here, we have a lot of 
uh, work that comes out of our programs, again, from traditional to fine art, hands-on, to the digital um, and technology as well. Uh, so I, I know that this provides our students, you know, kind of a, you know, nice competitive edge uh, where I think that they will have many open doors that would be available for them, and I think they're going to be a, quite a step ahead of, of the job market there. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to us today um, here from East Stroudsburg University. And Cheryl, I'm going to pass it on to you. Thank you, Darlene and Sam and Rachel for that great insight. And wow, I think I want to go back to college and join your program. It sounds like you have a great set of students and a great experience uh, every day while they're in class. As we draw our webinar to a close, I just want to make everyone aware of some other opportunities for continuing the conversation we started today. So Stratus has provided an education innovation series e-newsletter, and if you are interested in continuing to hear about stories like ESU and other universities doing great things with 3D printing, you can subscribe online at stratuscom slash industry slash education slash innovation series and subscribe to receive that monthly communication. In addition, there are other stories and other research articles that are available, including lesson plans and materials you can use to activate your classrooms. And you can find all of those resources on stratuscom industries slash education, and they are available for your use. Let us know if there's other ideas you have. We would love to share more stories with uh, educators around the globe. We do have time for one question today, and uh, since we're kind of at the end of our time, Darlene, I thought I would just pose one question to you as an educator, if you okay. wouldn't mind giving your opinion on how has 3D printing changed your education experience as you teach and instruct students in these experiences? Oh, so it, it changed my own educational experience as a as a educator? As an educator, yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I personally as an artist, I love constantly exploring and discovering new technology and new tools that are out there. Um, and so, so that's a great, I think, benefit for me, um, you know, here, because as I, I train myself um, as far as learning constant new software that's available or, you know, the ever-changing uh, technology that I, you know, I, I can double dip a little bit. So for me as an as a artist, designer, and as an educator, it all works well together. Um, it is a struggle, though. I, I do find that, you know, I, I teach full time. Um, I also, you know, have a personal life, family, and I, I make art as well on the side. So, you know, constantly trying to train myself is, is a challenge. I spent spend a lot of late nights um, learning new software, all right? It's all self-taught, you know, so it, thank goodness there's uh, video tutorials out there and there's people that have already, you know, kind of delved themselves into this, so they, they kind of put that information out there and that's very helpful. Thanks for sharing that experience uh, with our audience and other educators. Again, a great big thank you for Sam, Rachel, and Darlene to share their experience at ESU with our audience today. We appreciate your commitment to 3D printing and look forward to big things as uh, Sam and Rachel embark on careers here in the next few years. Thank you everyone for listening and we hope to see you again at our next webinar. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, Cheryl, and thank you to Darlene, Sam, and Rachel for uh, really an excellent presentation. I'd also like to thank Stratasys at this point for its support of today's webinar. Now, I see that some members of the audience did ask questions that sadly we were unable to get to today. So if that's the case, don't worry. Someone from Stratasys will follow up with you directly to get you some answers. So as we wrap up today, a final reminder we will be sending out an email to all attendees when the recording of the webinar is ready. Thank you all again for attending today, and this concludes our webcast. Goodbye.